Thank you. So, no slides from me in my five minutes. Um, so, we've heard um, lots of evidence that biodiversity is responding to climate change. Um, work of Chris Thomas and Camille and others in this room has shown that over the last few decades in terms of um, terrestrial responses. We're often looking at upslope distribution shifts. We're talking about polewood distribution shifts. We can talk about phenological changes. And Camille's just given us a brief overview of some of the complexities um, in that area. So we know, we know that um, biodiversity is responding, but we were asked to comment about kind of changing narratives within this, this field. And the narrative a decade ago was certainly one of concern that biodiversity is being impacted by climate change. And of course, the IPCC then led, um, concluded with very high confidence that climate change is already impacting living systems. And that was really important, this body of science showing that biodiversity distributions, phenological shifts and that are responding um, to climate change. It was uh, important for policy debates leading up to Copenhagen and, and Paris, etc. But actually, given that we know that climate has been changing, it should come as no surprise to us biologists that biological systems will be responding. It's exactly what we would expect. It's nature's way of ad adapting to change. So the narrative, I think, is very much shifting in this field. We shouldn't be so much concerned that biodiversity is responding to climate change. Rather, we should be concerned if biodiversity is unable to respond to climate change, which is, I think, what sets up a lot of our um, kind of cutting edge research questions in this area at the moment. How do we actually help species to have these natural responses to adapt to climate change? So what I was going to do is just pick up um, probably kind of three main um, research questions that I think that are, are out there at the moment and are big challenges within our field. Firstly, how can we actually identify those species that are unlikely to be able to adapt, that are unlikely to be able to uh, implement these natural responses to climate change? So there's a whole bunch of work being done, for example, within the context of the IUCN's climate change specialist group around the question of how um, vulnerability assessments, of course, such as the IUCN's red list, can identify those species that are most um, at, at, at risk. And a whole bunch of like, assessment methodologies have been proposed. Um, many papers have come out in the last few years. But what we're increasingly seeing is that they don't give the same kinds of assessments. We get very different um, assessment outcomes from the different methodologies. So what we really need is a better mechanistic understanding of what makes species vulnerable to climate change so that we can have the underlying science to do the better applied conservation biology through building more effective vulnerability assessments. So I, I hope that's some of the conversation that we will have, how we can identify species that are going to be unable to adapt. A second key question that I think is, is out there is how we can better design networks of wildlife areas to support this adaptation. So we know that species move through landscapes to respond to change, but how can we facilitate that ad adaptation um, by, by building better networks? So applying things like spatial network theory to design um, uh, networks that, that make species more resilient to change. Um, I'll point to a recent paper that Nick Isaac led that was published just a, a month or so ago in, in, in Journal of Applied Ecology that digs into some of these key questions. And a key conclusion for that is basically that, well, we need better reserves, more healthy reserves. We need bigger reserves. We need more of them, and we need them better connected. We need them more joined up. So we're building some of the science, but then to take that into a policy agenda, for example, what we're trying to do in the UK, is to build that into the kind of policy uh, agenda. So that's a big challenge for the research community to get these basic scientific things within to um, actually applied conservation planning. And then finally, I think, uh, for me, a third big research challenge. Much of the work in, in the field that I've been working on has been looking at individual species' responses to, to, to climate change. So we ask, how does this particular species respond to, to, to climate change? But we know that, that responses are, are, are driven at a community level. We know that as one species responds, that's going to have knock-on impacts on other species. These are complex responses, and they're very poorly understood. We don't really have the methodologies at the moment to actually implement community-level analyses of how whole communities will respond. 
From my own work, um, we published a paper in Ecology Letters. Philip Stanek-Zenko was the lead author um, last year in which we've developed a framework for trying to do this, but that's just one example of how we can connect up individual species. We use Bayesian networks, but within network approaches to actually ask, well, as one species is responding, how is that going to impact another species? And it's only really by doing this community-level um, analyses, these, these, these analyses of how species are, are bumping into each other and, and, and the knock-on impacts that we can actually then talk about the function, say take pollination as one species is lost from a system, well maybe another species will come in to replace that function and then f therefore the impact on human well-being. So I think that's where we need to go from individual species to communities so that we can understand functional responses that can then tell us about human well-being and I know some of the later talks um, in the next couple of days are going to pick up on some of those those themes but I think certainly for me that's one of the real big research challenges for this kind of community. Thank you.